Sean Hook's Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us for Newsmaker Saturday. It's great to be here right at the venue of Super Bowl 57. In a few hours, they will kick it off. I thought it would be the perfect time tonight for this program to talk to two guys who've been through this experience. Max Starks of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but we begin with Gray Rugemer, played in two Super Bowls and won both of them. One with the Patriots and Tom Brady, one with the New York Giants at this very stadium. We begin with Gray. Two for two in uh, Super Bowls, and there aren't a lot of guys like that. Gray, good to have you on the program. Awesome to be here. Thank you for uh, having me. So what a career at ASU you had with Jake Plummer and, and, and all the guys, Tillman, the whole thing. You get to the Rose Bowl, you lose to Ohio State. I hate to bring that up. It was, I was there, I was on the field. It was a horrible feeling. But can you compare that pressure going into that game to your first Super Bowl? Is it even comparable? It's, I think it's two different things. You know, uh, playing for the National Championship with that team at Arizona State was, I don't know that we felt a lot of pressure. We just went out there and played because everyone told us we couldn't do it. And that was very similar to my first Super Bowl. Um, everyone, uh, so in 2001, Patriots played uh, St. Louis Rams in New Orleans, and everyone told us we shouldn't be there. We didn't have a chance to win. And then in 2007, when we played, uh, New York Giants played New England Patriots, we were, again, underdogs. And there was really no pressure on us because no one thought we could win. I think if you go into it as the top dog and thinking that you're expected to win, I think there's a little more pressure on people to perform. And those three instances, we, I mean, we knew we could play football. And unfortunately, the first one we lost the national championship, and then uh, won the next two. But I don't know that it's the only com the comparison I would say is that we were underdogs and you, everyone told us we couldn't. So we went out there and competed and let the chips fall. Do you, Gray, do you think it's easier for, for a team to be an underdog in a big game like that? Do you think it somehow frees them up? Absolutely. Uh, well, you, you see the buildup with the media. They're going to dissect every little thing on offense, defense, personality traits, the quarterbacks, the kicker, you know, the, the water boy, the athletic trainer. They go through everything. <laughs> and they, they're going to find a difference somewhere, and they're going to make they're going to make something out of nothing. So I, I think it helps being the underdog because – you just put it on the shelf and you, you prepare like it's another game. Yeah, so you, you're playing now in 2002. You hadn't been in the league that long. Um, you've got a young Tom Brady who takes over at quarterback midseason. Um, not even mid. It was early on when, when Bledsoe went down. So you've got the, the Tom Brady coming, starting to come of age a little bit. You're 14-point underdogs against the Rams in that game. Do you recall yep. your feelings before you went out that, that day? You're in the tunnel. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What's your body experiencing? <laughs> well, there's always a little bit of the, right, the nervous peas, like, all right, did, did I go to the bathroom before I you know, <laughs> step on the field? Uh, but, you know, obviously there's a lot of excitement, a, a little bit of uh, nerves that go out there. But those, those always go away after the first hit. You know, you get on the field, there's, there's a lot of buildup, but it's almost a relief to get on the field because finally all the hoopla is behind you. Now it's down to what you've been training for. You're pretty much, you know, in my case, my entire adult life and most of our guys, you know, opportunity to play in the Super Bowl. So it was a relief to get back to business and get rid of the hoopla. So the first hit is kind of when it becomes just another game. I hate to say that. Yeah, you, you know, so some guys react differently. Some guys are uh, pregame pukers. Some guys, you know, need to talk a lot. Some guys need to crack jokes. Uh, for me, it was always, I was always kind of nervous until you felt that first contact, and then, yeah, you're good. So I'm curious about this. You've got this ridiculous halftime show uh, every Super Bowl. It's like 35 minutes. It goes on forever. Worst. And for the people at home, it's great. But for you guys, what are you doing in the locker room during halftime? How do you guys stay loose, stay focused? Uh, is there a lot of adjustments going on? Because I'm hearing more and more that there aren't a lot of adjustments at halftime. You guys are just yeah. kind of doing your thing. It, it really depends on the team, but generally in the first five to eight minutes, you get all your adjustments that you're going to go into for the rest of the game. And then you just sit down and try to stay warm and uh, you know, kind of just wait. You just hurry up and wait. The, you know, the halftimes at the Super Bowl are ridiculous. Uh, I, I understand it's the entertainment of football and, you know, getting big entertainers out there to entertain the crowd, and that's where the money is made. But as a player, it's awful. It takes forever. 
And, you know, you don't really get to see the show, so you, so you hear all these big-name stars are going to be out there. It'd be different if they were performing after the game, and, you know, we could have some beers and party with them. But <laughs> can, uh, you so, hear the, can you hear the show in the locker room? Oh, yeah, you, you can feel the energy. Like, you can hear the stadium move for sure. And, hey, all right, 10 minutes left. How much? Uh, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> all right. Know, we want to we, we host the tro- trophy, hopefully, and, you know, we get on with our lives and, you know, get back with our family. So, Adam, so. Adam Vinatieri <laughs> hits a 48-yarder to win that game as the clock expired. Do you remember where you were on the field when he kicked that ball? Yep, I was the, uh, the left. Was that left tight end? I think it was the left tight end on field goal. So we all got to watch that ball go through, and we all lost our collective minds. Obviously, being 14-point dogs in that game, that was uh, significant for us, being the first Super Bowl for the Patriots. And then just, you know, overall how the game went. You know, with, uh, you know Coach Belichick had a really good defensive plan. We managed the game on offense, and look what, look what happened. Did you think he was going to make it? Absolutely. We, we had a ton of faith in Adam. He'd been banging them all year. So line them up and kick it. That's what that's what helped. You did know, you know? Did you know at that time? Obviously, with Tom Brady's retirement announced, did you know at that time that Brady had the qualities to be really special? I think a lot of quarterbacks in the league have certain qualities that you see develop as they play more and more. And I think Tom really stepped up to the plate when Drew got hurt that year, and you could see those things. Like it was in its infancy, obviously. And then, you know, staying in the system for as long as he did with Coach Belichick, I think that really helped him develop. And as he progressed, yeah, he he had those he had those things, and then it just continued to develop and develop as he came up through that system. Would you have ever predicted he would have become Tom Brady? <laughs> uh, no, it's hard to predict. Put your hat on when you're 24 years old and say, hey, this guy's going to be the GOAT in what, what was that? 20 years later, yeah, yeah, he finally retires and, you know, 10 Super Bowl appearances, seven wins. That's, that's ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. All right. You end up um, with the New York Giants playing your former team in 2008 here in Arizona where you spent a lot of time. How special was that? And again, I think you're 14-point underdogs in that game, right? Yep, we were dogs in that game for sure. How, was that even sweeter to win that one? It was, it was very cool for me personally because uh, playing for the Giants, we came back to uh, Green Bay for the NFC Championship game to beat a former team, to then go to Arizona where I played college, to then play another former team for the you know, Super Bowl. So it was, it was a mini trifecta for me personally. But, yeah, it, I mean, it, it was it was awesome. That that team, uh, we, were, we were dogs. We went on the road, won 11 straight games to make it to the Super Bowl. So we were very proud of our accomplishment, but we knew – we had, we had more than a fair shot because we played the Patriots at the end of that season and lost by three points to them. So we knew we were in it. Gray, the night before a game, can you sleep or do you struggle? I'm good. Uh, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, we put it to bed. You know, all of our guys, we'll talk, we'll sit around, we'll BS, uh, just kind of go through the game plan. We go through our meetings. But, yeah, no, I, I usually had no problem sleeping. Knowing what was before us, so you kind of you learn how to manage that as best as possible. Some guys don't sleep, but I'd, yeah, I never had a problem with that. This is going back now several years since you've won one of these, but you won two of them. You played in two and you won two. Is it something you think about nearly every day? Something flashes from that experience? Um, I wouldn't say every day, but being, being in the business, you know, working for uh, the Green Bay Packers, it's definitely, you want to win championships. You want to, you know, get to that Super Bowl. So there are definitely times when you go through the year, because it's football, right? The, the ultimate goal, if you're playing football, is number one, to get to the NFL, then number two, get a Super Bowl ring. So, it, I, you know, guys play that all the time. So it comes up fairly frequently, and I will, I will think about some of those experiences that happen throughout the year and how they relate to our players, kind of how they relate to, you know, championship-style football. So I wouldn't say every day, but it's definitely part of the process, especially, you know, still working in the industry. Does it fade or is it still pretty vivid to you, those experiences? Oh, they're, they're bright as day. It, you don't forget those things. That, that was a lifetime achievement to be with those guys and, you know, remember the game and the celebrations afterwards with family. Yeah, it's, it's still very vivid. I had a friend who played um, at every level. And he told me that the most fun he ever had was playing high school football. He said, by the time you get to college, it becomes a bit of a job. And then if you go to the next level, it really is a job. Do you agree with that? 
Uh, I wouldn't agree with playing high school was uh, the most fun because we sucked in high school. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, ASU. Know, when you, you know, I had a ton of fun at Arizona State. I had a ton of fun in the NFL, but it is very much a business. And the quicker guys learn the business of the NFL, the quicker you'll have fun and learn to enjoy that aspect of it because it is work. You know, a lot of people don't appreciate the hours that guys put in just to prepare to play on Sundays, but it is work. If you're doing your job, you're in the building during the season, you know, seven days a week, and you're figuring out a way to physically, mentally get better. Man, it's great spending some time with you, Gray. Uh, great memories from ASU, and you had a terrific, terrific NFL career. Man alive. Uh, you may have even defied your own <laughs> expectations. I don't know. No, I, I certainly did. You know, blessed and very fortunate to have the support of my family and uh, my wife, you know, throughout that whole career. And just, uh, yeah, very fortunate to, uh, you know, be able to have that platform at Arizona State as well. So, you know, I can't thank the coaches and teammates enough for all that. Two-time Super Bowl champion and ASU great, Gray Rugemer. Great to see you. And uh, best of luck with the Packers as well. Appreciate you. Great talking to you. Good to see you, Gray. Thank you. Coming up next on Newsmaker Saturday, we speak with two-time Super Bowl champion Max Starks with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he also lost one, and that's the one he can't quite put out of his mind. Max Starks is next. Max Starks was an all-pro in the NFL, 10 seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers. During that time, he played in three Super Bowls. He won two, and he lost one. Max, on what it's like to run that gauntlet before game day. You got kind of your start in a way here with Jude LaCava, right? Jude kept yeah. putting you on the air, and now you're doing sideline with the Steelers. What else are you doing? You're well, ESPN? <laughs> yeah, ESPN Radio. I also do um, Sirius XM, so I work college as an analyst up in the booth and pro for ESPN when I'm not working for the Steelers. Yeah. And then Sirius XM is, quote-unquote, the 9 to 5 during the week. Um, so it keeps me busy. I also still work for 98.7 out here right. um, as well, doing a weekly segment. Um, so I stay busy this time of year. This is a fun time yeah. of year. It's a lot safer. Yes, it is. <laughs> I feel better on Mondays. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Max, take me back to your first Super Bowl. This was 2006. You guys beat the Broncos. That was Jake Plummer, by the way, right? Yeah. In yeah. that AFC championship. It was. Okay, you win and you're in the locker room and you know you're going to the Super Bowl. When does it start to dawn on you that you're in a pressure packed deal that's unlike anything you've ever experienced? So we win the Super Bowl. Oh, sorry. We win the AFC Championship game that day. And they bring in the trophy's a lot different than it is now. Like it's a nice silver, flimsy, you know, <laughs> very, very easy to carry yeah. portable trophy versus the big hunk of, you know, almost looks like a Heisman Trophy type of trophy right. um, that they presented back in the day that had the stadium. Um, I just remember celebrating with my teammates. Like with the offensive line, we had a moment where. We were like, yes, we won the AFC Championship game. This feels so good. And then that mo emotion and that type of relevance kind of wears off after like 24 hours. You know, you take the flight back, you celebrate that night, um, and then you check in for work on Monday, and you're like, oh, we still got another game. Yeah. And in fact, it's two weeks away, and there's all of this production that goes into it, not just for the game itself, but – the build up to get everything in place so that you're not distracted at the place where there's the largest distractions. Okay, now now at that point, is the coaching staff trying to keep it as normal as possible, or are you already feeling from the coaches anxiety and like they're doing all nighters trying to get ready? Yeah, that, now that first Wednesday practice, which is normal practice week for everybody, that's when you're coming into practice. You're like, okay, we're gonna get the initial game plan, initial install, and you have to go in, and the coach is that much more nervous. He's got a million things on, on the script that he wants to rep and go through until we get to the Super Bowl. And then you have the distraction of tickets with the family because they, at th that time, I'm not sure what it is now, it was 18 tickets per player. So now trying to get your ticket situation down, trying to call your mom, your aunties, yep. and see who's coming to the game, who did my mom promise <laughs> that she could, could and come you're to the handling game. this, nobody's handling it for you. No, you have to handle it because you have to fill out the form and physically turn it in okay. to the ticket office. So I have to handle that. And then there's a day where you come in for, for memorabilia for the Super Bowl, not as a champion, but Super Bowl, such and such. You know, for me, it was 40. You know, it was Seahawks, Steelers, like all that type of co-branded merchandise. You got to go in, you get a great deal on it. So you're calling your family, you're calling your buddies all in the city. Hey, you want to come in and get discounted Super Bowl stuff? 
come in. It's like a shopping spree. But it's distracting. It is very distracting. So, so do you recall do you recall a moment during week one leading up to the Super Bowl where you looked at film of the Seahawks who you played and beat? Yeah. And you guys said to each other, we should be able to beat these guys. I mean, is there a moment or were, were you not sure? No, we, we were nervous because once again, you realize the gauntlet that they went through to get to this point, just like you did. Like for us, we had to win out from pretty much the beginning of December That's right. just to even get the six seeds. You so had a slow start. This is Mike Tomlin's first year, by the way. No, this is Cowers. This I'm is sorry, Cowers, second to last That's right, year. Cowers. For the next Super Bowl was Yeah, was next Super Tomlin. Bowl was Tomlin. So, so we're nervous because, you know, we've, we've gone on the road on top of having to finish out like the last four games of the season. We then went on the road three straight weeks. We went to Cincinnati, Indianapolis, that crazy game where Ben made the yep. fumble. And then, of course, going up to mile high and beating Denver. So at this point, we're like, man, OK, can the momentum keep going? So you watch that Seattle squad. You're watching. You know, Matty uh, Hasselback at quarterback. You're watching Sean Alexander. You're seeing Walter Jones, right? And Steve Hutchinson and these big, formidable offensive line. Like, man, we, our offense has to compete with that offense. That's how we kind of looked at it. Like, can we keep pace score wise with that team? So you weren't sure at all no. that you were going to win that game? No. I mean, and, and you're nervous leading up into that game because, like, it's champion on champion. This, this, there, there's no, you know, like college, like you get that one warm up fluff game, like you'll play a directional yeah. state university. A&M Commonwealth, you know, <laughs> you're, you're playing the winners of the NFC. Yeah. So when take me into game week, it's all this whole thing. You've got media day. You've got all this stuff. Yeah. Does nothing feel normal? No, there's nothing normal about it. You wake up first thing in the morning because whereas a normal week you get up, you, you, you know, you get ready for the day. You go to practice and your day starts with that first morning meeting here in Super Bowl. You know, they have morning media responsibilities in a tent outside the hotel. You know, you're going to do that. And then, of course, you, now you have Super Bowl opening night, which is going to be, you know, which was Monday. And you're in a basketball arena of all places. You're in this off-site facility doing this big welcoming ceremony where both teams see each other, really. We didn't see each other back in the day. Now you see each other, and then you kind of get that eye measure test when you're going into this and environment. And what did that tell you? And that, that, that tells you all you need to know. Because you can see the confidence in guys' eyes, you can also see the uncertainty. What did, what did you see? Oh, I mean, for me, I looked, because Bryce Fisher was the defensive end I was going against. So I looked at Bryce. Bryce had a confidence about him because he's an Air Force guy, so he's military, so he's always taught to be resolute. But I saw him sweat. I saw a bead of sweat down the side of his head, <laughs> and I was like, that's the guy I'm going after. Like, mentally, because wow. you look for any type of edge. Uh, yeah. You need it. Because whether it's real or not. Whether, it, whether I need to make a Tom Brady chip and put it on my back <laughs> or whether I need to go ahead and say, you know what? His shoes aren't tied. I got the advantage on him. Yeah. My, both of my shoes are tied. You'll find a way. How do you sleep the night before the game? Uh, sleeping pills. <laughs> You're, it is really restless. Yeah, Tylenol PM. I took a Tylenol PM the, before each of the Super Bowls just because I knew that nervous energy was there. And for me, I always like to visualize the game. I, I start doing my mental reps starting on Wednesday. When I get the play sheet, I'll, I'll spend the first couple nights watching film religiously and then playing the, playing the game out in my head as though I know the call sheet. Okay, now you're in the tunnel about to go out. What's going on with you physically at that point? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm shaking. Are you out of your mind? You're out of your mind. I mean, and, and when it's the Super Bowl, you know there's the pomp and circumstance that's out there. Uh, you know, there's some famous singer sure. singing America the Beautiful. And the world is watching. And the world is watching. And when you come out there, all the flashes. And then you see this long line of flags and former Super Bowl champions and all of the, the, the celebrity that goes and the production value that goes into this. So the first thing I'm thinking is don't trip because I always like to be one of the first ones that ran out. Don't trip. And for that one, thank God, we let Jerome run out first by himself just to give him that moment inside of Ford Field. This is homecoming. This is right. finale. Like, he came back for this moment. So let him have his moment. So he thinks we're all going to run out with him. He's getting us hyped. He runs out. He gets about halfway down, looks around, and is like, come on. Come on, guys. And then we all run out after him. But it was just it was one of those special moments. So my job was just don't trip and just make it to the sidelines. How about managing your emotions to not burn too much energy before the actual game starts? It sounds great in theory. It sounds really great in theory, but practical application is not philosophy. Right. <laughs> I was exhausted. <laughs> I was nervous wreck. And you try, and luckily the second time, I got the second time 
to go through that in Super Bowl 43. But the first time, I was winded. I was doing all kinds of extra stuff. I had to, I had to take oxygen. The only time I ever took oxygen was during Super Bowl 40. No kidding. Okay, yeah. who was on that team who had been in the Super Bowl? I think the other one before that with Cower was here at Sun Devil Stadium. Super yeah, Bowl correct. 30. Yeah. Was there anybody left on that team who could say, okay, guys, here's what it's like? Well, Cower could. Cower could. Willie Williams was the only active That's player. Right. That's Willie right. Williams was the only one left from that team that made it all the way through Did 40. he give you guys, did he tell you guys what the deal Willie was? Willie didn't say much. Willie Will was just like, I don't want to lose again. <laughs> That's all yeah. he said. He's like, I don't well, want to lose again. Well, this is the thing about yeah. football. There, there, there is a motivation to win, but there's this incredible fear of failure, right? Yes. You, yes. The last thing you want to do is lose that opportunity. Yeah. And that really is a motivator, right? It, it's one of the bigger drivers. Like, you know, there's only two ways to really drive you when you get into a Super Bowl. It's either the expectation of victory or the fear of defeat. Those are the two. So whichever side you pour that cup into is going to determine how your attitude is going into it. And both of them are great motivators for energy and for, for that frenetic type yeah. of, you know, boost that you need in game time. You know, either it's the tightness of not failing or it's the looseness of I expect to win. And you win that you win that Super Bowl. Then you then you face the Cardinals in 2009. Breaking the heart of every Cardinals fan. Yes. I Larry know. looks like he's won the game with that incredible touchdown. Yeah. And then he watched himself on the highlights as he ran into the end zone. <laughs> I know he did. I know he did. Yeah. And then <laughs> Santonio San Holmes, with just a few seconds left, catches it in the corner. Which one was sweeter? Who? I mean, that, Max, you're, you're in rare company. You never yeah. lost one. You no, played I, it? Well, yeah, I lost one, which is 45. We, we don't talk about that one now. Oh, you did. That's right. Against Green Bay. That was the one where we should have just ran the ball. So do you think about that more than the two you won? I do. I you do. do. I do think about that one. Like both of the victories were special because like for Super Bowl 40, it wasn't just about Jerome. It wasn't just about my first year starting. It was I got to play a Super Bowl in the same city. My father played the only other Super Bowl that was played in Detroit. So that has a sentimental place in my heart for that. Um, Super Bowl 43 was special because that was the closest I was going to get to home. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Right. And Tampa was the closest pro stadium to my yes. house. So it was homecoming. And it was something that really meant a lot because I knew I was going to get to play in front of my family. The people that supported me as a young kid when I wasn't allowed to play football as a youth, couldn't play for the Callahan Express because I was too big. And then I go to Jones High School. <laughs> That's the first time I'm exposed to football in earnest in a structured environment in ninth grade. So those coaches, those friends, all my former teammates, my buddies, everybody's watching this moment. And so that was a primary motivator was to not let the people I care about down. One thing before we go, what do you take away from those Super Bowl experiences? What's the thing you'd want people to know about what that experience is like? The one thing I want people to know is as, as special as that moment is to get here, just also respect the guy's taking the moment in. I know you're going to see a guy on the street and you want to rush and take his time because, oh my gosh, I get to see this guy that's going to play on Sunday. But they're human too. And sometimes you just want to bask in the moment. Like we don't get a lot of moments to reflect as players because you're always taught to move on to the next play, yeah. next game, next season. And so this is your moment because of the way the week is stretched out and the fact that you're on site for you know this amount of time. Let those guys have those private moments, especially if you see a guy with his, with his wife or with his kids or with his parents. Let them have those couple of moments because those moments are special and precious to us. And you want to have that type of memory. I'll never forget having a chance to go sit and eat dinner with my brothers in Tampa um, and just have that moment of just, I don't even remember the restaurant. I don't even remember the food, but I remember the laughter. I remember the conversation. <laughs> yeah. And we always talk about that even all these years later that that was a special private moment that we had in a very public place and a very public moment that I'm going to be a part of. But sometimes just respect that humanity yep. with, with it, within it because I have memories from that that I will always cherish. And you don't want to ruin those memories for those other people, just like you wouldn't expect anybody to ruin it for yourself. Yeah. Max, great to see you. Max Thanks. Starks, um, I forgot about the one you lost. Yeah. We're not Thank going to you. talk about Thank that. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk about that. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah thanks. All right. <laughs> Back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Thanks again for joining us for Newsmaker Saturday. Continuing coverage of Super Bowl 57 right here on Fox 10. Enjoy the game.